Factor Show. The bandwidth for this episode of The Power Factor Show is brought to you by the Firearms Radio Network. Firearmsradio.tv Sponsored by Taylor Freelance, Rainier Ballistics, Hodgson Powders, and JPL Precision. Welcome back to Power Factor. Um... Today I'm going to talk about a chapter out of this book called Break Em All, A Complete Guide to Fixing Clay Target Shooting Problems. Initially I was going to just discuss this book from a book review standpoint, but as I started actually going through here, there's a lot of really good information in here, and I would highly recommend that you go out and buy this book. Um, we'll throw up the, uh, the link to their webpage uh, so you can order it. But there's a, really a lot of good information here. So rather than going through as a book review, I thought, well, you know what, rather than doing that, let's go and actually start taking some of the chapters and using it as an instructional series um, of things we can talk about uh, and take the information from the book. So I'm just going to give you the table of contents here of the things that are covered in the book, uh, just as a heads up. And, we're not, and again, I'm not going to cover all this stuff, I'm only going to cover probably some bits and pieces of it. Um, binding up during a swing, wrong hold point, finishing off balance, incorrect gun fit, incorrect or improper gun mount, lifting your head, not picking up the target visually, not focusing on the target, closing the eyes, erratic swing movements, riding the target, aiming, stopping the swing, calling for the target prematurely, flinching, trapping the trigger, choosing the correct choke, performing poorly under pressure, negative self-talk and relaxation. So that just kind of gives you a heads up of all the different subjects that are covered in the book here. One of the things I really like about the format of this book is that it's really heavily driven to allowing a person to self-evaluate what they're doing, to recognize the problem, and to correct it. So they have a section here, and this is covered on every single chapter the way they do this, called Problem Identification and Resolution. And the questions are, and there's four of them, what does it mean, or what, I'm sorry, what it really means, how to know if I'm doing it, how do I stop doing it, and things I can do to prevent it from happening again. This is really key because it allows you, after reading these things, to start looking at it and going, yeah, yeah, I actually was doing that. Um, and it, it really, it, in my mind, is a great book for, for exposing you to this stuff and making you realize that possibly you're doing it and then telling you how to fix it. So for today, I'm going to talk about something. So before you pistol guys tune out, actually this chapter, I decided to start out with this because it's, it's going to probably help you as much as the shotgunners. But the chapter is performing poorly under pressure. Um, we've all had to deal with pressure before in the past, and it's amazing that even for somebody who can normally deal with pressure, they'll still run into problems um, of, of having to deal with it and recognize it and fix it. So some of the things here, what it really means. This means the shooter's performance decreases under periods of stress. When a shooter's score is dropped during periods of anxiety over and over again, such as that there is a consistent and noticeable pattern to this occurrence, the shooter is probably performing poorly under pressure. That's the key thing here is that you know, you'll go out, you'll shoot, sometimes you do really poorly, but other times you do great and it's not an issue. If you consistently are running into problems where you are performing poorly because of pressure, then pressure probably is affecting you and it's something that you need to resolve. Uh, it says here that all shooters at one time or another have seen the performance decrease under periods of stress and anxiety. This is normal as no one is perfect all the time. No one wins every shoot off. Well, that's true. Um, there's two types of pressure that you can deal with, and one is internal pressure, and the other one is external pressure. So internal pressure is one such that, let's say in terms of shotgunning, um, you're shooting skeet or you're shooting trap, 
you're shooting straight, you're shooting clean, you're up about, I don't know, 22, 23 birds, and it's like, wow, I actually may actually you know, shoot 25 straight. Um, another example of this is from a pistol shooting standpoint is you're, let's say, one or two stages away from the end of the match, and you're thinking, wow, if I really continue doing well, I'm going to you know, win my division or whatever the case may be. And then you can guess what happens next in both situations. When you start thinking about this stuff, usually you tank. Uh, so that's a sign of internal pressure. External pressure, they say, exists um, when there's a tangible reward for performing well, like a, pro a trophy or a prize money or something like that. So those are external influences. Um, again, kind of getting back to I'm doing really well, uh, I'm going to you know, win $1,000 or whatever the case is, or a trophy or a plaque or um, you know, first walk to the prize table or you know, whatever, um, but you have some external tangible item at, at risk here or at stake, um, and then you end up tanking. Uh, so how do I know if I'm doing it? You are missing targets at the end of a round or event, there's a key, or during a shoot-off, or when an important milestone is about to be achieved. Uh, if you have to do, have an issue with performing poorly under pressure and you're usually aware of it, uh, however, there is an excellent way to determine if you are indeed performing poorly under pressure is to truthfully answer the following questions. Are your practice scores always higher than your competition scores? Do you consistently miss targets at the end of the round when you are straight? Do you miss targets time after time at the end of an event when you are about to finish with a good score? Is your performance and your scores during a shoot-off often less than what it should be? Do you consistently do worse when people are watching you shoot? This is really kind of funny here. Um, I have to relate a story to you here recently that happened, actually two stories. One is pistol shooting, the other one shotgun shooting. Um, I just got back into being able to shoot last weekend and I have been sh or was shooting better than I ever have. Went into the very last, um, we shot two 50 bird courses of fire was shooting the second 50 bird courses of fire. When in the last stand, I had a 36 going, or 36 out of 40 targets, um, shooting the last 10. And I'm thinking, wow, if I actually shoot these last 10, and it was a, just like a, a stage I was really looking forward to shooting. It was like I mean, this, something I'd seen previously while dry fire practicing for the last two weeks prior to that. So I was like really looking forward to shooting this. And I'm thinking, you know, if I really do well here, I'm going to come out of this with a 46. That's better than I've ever shot any, you know, sporting clays course of fire. Um, and for my first time back shooting, that would really be an accomplishment. So everything's going great. Um, Lynn, who was shooting before me, who you met before the sporting clays episode, had just come out with a 45. And everybody was congratulating Lynn on what a great job he did of shooting a 45. And I'm thinking, wow, if I do really well here and I'm, I'm really looking forward to this, I'm going to shoot a 46. That's one better than a 45. So I shoot the first six birds perfectly straight. Everything's great. And at that point, it goes through, wow, I may actually shoot a 46. Next pair goes up. I hit the first bird and go right over the, it was an outgoing bird and an incoming bird. I go right over the incoming bird. And at that point, I'm going, crap, I just blew my 46. But I can get a 45, and you know, 45 is, is the same score as Lynn, so at least it'll be a tie of what he did. And, and that'll be really cool. I call pull. I'm not even thinking about anything. I didn't see birds. I didn't see the relationship of the gun to the bird. I just saw a thing go up. I went blam, blam, missed them both. Crap, I blew my last three targets. And instead of coming out with a 46, I came out with a 43, which is still pretty good, but it's not a 46. And literally, I went into that stage at this point thinking about my score rather than blanking all that out and just focusing on shooting and I basically succumbed to the pressure of shooting those last thing, those last targets. And this is a perfect example in here of what they talk about of going into your last stand and blowing the last birds. That's exactly what I did. Another example is years ago, um, I went down to the Firearms Academy of Seattle to um, sh take their advanced pistol shooting course. And this was the year that I decided to switch over to shooting my Glock uh, 19 in production division. Is just something new to do and mix things up. So I didn't have a whole lot of, of uh, trigger time on the Glock. I planned to, to do um, this advanced class and to shoot the whole entire rest of the year. So um, 
at the end of the two-day training class, they have what's called the FAS um, Master Certification Course, and Marty Hayes said something basically that only 20 or 30 percent of the people who come through and do this um, are able to actually achieve master on the first time they go through and do it. And I really wasn't having any trouble during any of the exercises that we've been doing over the last two days. Everything was great. Um, and all of a sudden, now it's like, okay, now we're going to begin the, the, the course, the challenge. And they allow you to do one mulligan, which basically means you, you have to shoot all these exercises perfect. You can't drop anything. Um, but if you, if you basically drop one, you're allowed to reshoot that one exercise again. And if you get it, you're good. If you don't, it doesn't matter what you do with the rest of it. You're not going to make master that time. You can try it again some other time. So, you know, I, I dealt with pressure before. I've shot the nationals. I've shot area matches. I felt like I was pretty, you know, pretty good at dealing with pressure. And all of a sudden, it's like once the clock starts, I felt the effects of pressure. It's like, oh, God, you know, and then you start shaking a little bit, um, and you're all of a sudden, you know, you think everything's great, that I can deal with this, but all of a sudden you're in a pressure situation. Um, and I was able to pull myself out of it. I mean, you just, you know, you relax, you step back, um, you try to calm down, um, you know, curb the butterflies and the jitters and everything like that. And after you start relaxing and have confidence, everything is great uh, from there on out. And I'm happy to say that I actually shot everything perfect and didn't have any mulligans and shot it clean. And I guess I fell into the 20 or 30 percent group. But it was just kind of funny about how I felt like I was able to deal with pressure and not have any problems with it. Um, and in the case there at FAS, I actually experienced it. And last weekend, um, at, at, uh, at Granite Falls shooting sporting clays at the very last stage, I started doing the math and thinking about my score rather than thinking about breaking birds. Um, that mentally gets into your head, um, and that just blows your performance all to hell. So, Okay, so the next question here is, how do I stop doing it? Use relax, relax, relaxation techniques to reduce anxiety during times of increased stress. Um, and they go through here and talk a little bit about, in fact, there's a whole entire chapter on relaxation. But they say, why do you want to or need to do um, relaxation or exercises? Because anxiety has very specific psychological and physiological effects that are negative to your performance. This can result in the following. Erratic swing movements due to psychological nervousness resulting in jumpiness. Calling for the target prematurely to get the desired result as quickly as possible. Writing the target and aiming at the target to be more precise and ensure a good hit. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention on that first bird that I missed out of the uh, out of the ten where I shot, it was the fourth pair where I shot the first one and busted it and went over the second one. I'm pretty sure I think I actually went back and looked at the barrels to see how I was doing because I was thinking I'm going to really drill this thing. And I think I aimed at it. Lifting the head to see the target as clearly as possible. So, like I said, the book talks about relaxation techniques, but one of the things that it, that I read really recently is that they said that in order to perform well, and this is anything that you're doing. Your mind needs to be relaxed, and your body needs to be relaxed. If your body is under stress, then your mind will be stressed, and vice versa. If your mind is stressed, your body will be stressed. There's no way that you can be in a situation where you're physiologically stressed but psychologically not stressed. If one is stressed, the other will be stressed, and that's something that you need to look out for. You need to, like if you're in fear of something and you're mentally stressed, then your body will be tense and your movements will not be as smooth as what they are. Um, and, and your trigger control will not be what it is or what it needs to be. So it's something that you really need to work on of uh, trying to be able to deal with anxi anxiety and relaxation. Things I can do to prevent it from happening again. You need to commit yourself to continue practice with relaxation techniques that have become um, de deployable on demand. That can be difficult for a lot of people because you're talking about literally mentally trying to put yourself into a state of relaxation on demand. And again, there are techniques and exercises that you can do that I'm not going to get into here. Um, being able to effectively use various relaxa relaxation techniques takes a lot of practice. No kidding. These techniques cannot be used when needed without some prior preparation. Relax relaxation techniques, like any skill, must be learned and practiced well in advance. Um, so they say here what you should do 
is recognized as a physiological and psychological signs of anxiety, as in butterflies in the stomach, tension in the muscles, sweaty palms, blurry vision, and weak self-image. Select the most effective relaxation technique to use. Employ the relaxation technique and experience immediate results and recognize the psychological and physiological signs of, of a normal state. In other words, know what normal is. Um, this will restore self-confidence and settle you down enough to execute proper shooting fundamentals. So they say that even though or even after relearning relaxation techniques, what you want to do is actually work at putting yourself into stress situations when there isn't anything at line so that when you do get into a situation, let's say a tournament or a major match or something that you're participating in, that you will have already experienced the stress situation and it won't be as stressful for you. So they go through and talk about some things you can do here to actually put yourself into these situations during practice, in other words, where nothing's at stake, so that when something is at stake, it'll just be like, oh yeah, it's just another walk in the park. Getting into shoot-offs as often as possible did I ever tell you about the shootout that I was involved in with Rob Latham? That was rather interesting. Um, he won, no surprise there. Requesting that someone whose opinion is very important to you observe you while you're shooting around. Making a friendly wager, such as lunch, soda, washing a car, or cleaning guns with another shooter whose skill level is at equal or greater value than yours. Then shoot shoulder to shoulder to settle the wager. So a couple of different ideas here about how you can basically put yourself into a stress situation and then use that to be able to deal with those stress situations. Apply relaxation techniques when you get under stress. Um, recognize, recognize the psychological and physiological effects of stress and then be able to deal with it and, and self-relax um, yourself, not to be redundant, uh, to, to basically be able to deal with it. Um, and I think after you start doing this stuff, you'll find that you're not under stress as much and that when you do get under stress, you'll be able to recover from it quickly rather than dwelling on it or being stuck in, in that situation um, for the rest of a match. So, so if you have any questions, uh, as usual, send us an email and hopefully answer them. Thanks. I haven't done a, a shotgun trivia question in a long time, a really long time. Um, so I came up with one, and this should be one that should be pretty well, pretty straightforward for a bit. We'll see, because you'd be surprised. Um, well, we'll just run it with that. So what, uh, like, shotguns are defined by gauge, 12 gauge, 16 gauge, 28, 20 gauge, 28 gauge, and 410, which obviously is diameter. What does... 12 gauge represent? How do they come up with 12 gauge? In other words, what does it mean? What, how, how do they go about measuring or what defines a 12 gauge shotgun? I uh, don't want to say any more than that. So send us your answers at powerfactorshow at gmail.com about how or what does 12 gauge mean? How do they go about or what is a measurement technique for a 12 gauge shotgun? Ba-dum-bum-bum, 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 ba-